you're on Animal Planet. The following is a special presentation of Animal Planet Sports. You know, a lot of people think agility is much too complicated to figure out how to do. We're here in Minneapolis at the Mall of America. I'm going to show you how, right here. Weepole! I got your weepole! They got tunnels too. And who needs a dog walk when you got the wall walk? Five, four, three, two, one. I can go backwards. Hey, can a dog go backwards? I don't think so. So jump to it. Agility is next. And oh, don't forget to wash your face. From Hazelwood Park in suburban St. Paul, Minnesota, this is the Animal Planet USDAA Grand Prix of Dog Agility Minnesota Regional Qualifier. Hello everyone, I'm Phil Moore here with perennial Grand Prix finalist Julie Daniels here for what promises to be a thrilling day of competition. It will be, Phil. Minnesota is one of the hotbeds of dog agility and we'll see some of the top canine and human competitors here today, including 1997 national champion Linda Mecklenburg, two-time champion Debbie Brink, and three-time AKC champion Terry Smarch. Wow, promise to be very exciting. Now, of course, everyone here is aiming for the national championships to be held later this year, but this particular the qualifier is structured like the Nationals, so we are guaranteed to see some exciting competition and performances here today. Julie, tell us a little bit about today's course. Oh, Phil, if there's one thing that characterizes the feel of this course today, it is speed. The course begins at an angle to the chute, then through a box of jumps to a difficult weed pole angle, over the number six jump and left to the dog walk, a sweep out over the triple to the table and a five second down, another open run through the tire to the far entrance of the tunnel, then down the middle over the seesaw around the pinwheel and a straight line to the A-frame. A tricky closing sequence tight over number 17 and into the tunnel through the last box of jumps at 19 and 20. For the larger, faster dogs, this is a difficult element of the course. They've just built up a head of steam over these two jumps, and now they need to manage the weave poles. After entering correctly, the handler will either stay on this side and push out to the number six jump, or the handler will cross at the weave poles, manage them with the dog on the left, and pull to the number six jump. There will be some interesting strategies here. Well, it'll be great to see the four height classes today. First up is the 22-inch class, and the course standard of 58 seconds, ready to get started first, is Awesome, handled by Linda Mecklenburg from Rockville, Maryland. Linda's one of the three former champions we mentioned earlier. Awesome, a three-year-old border collie, off to a very nice, fast start. Awesome's getting some great height over that. The hurdles are great for the reed poles. Look at that. Very quick, very efficient. But no wasted time. <laughs> Great making time on the contact zones yeah, too. And up onto the table stay. at 15 stay. seconds. Stay. Quick, focused, stay. calm. Great. Quick start there through the tunnel. <laughs> the awesome, I uh, almost missed this chance here because Linda said he loves to swim and jumped into the lake right before his turn here. <laughs> She's managing this run very carefully. Nice tight turn there. Oh, very close. Good handling on the part of Linda. Oh, what a great finish. Awesome finish of 42.44 seconds. And more importantly, no faults. Great job. Very nice. From the shoot to the dog walk here, Linda takes the inside track along the wee poles and pushes her dog out to the number six jump, then back to the dog walk. Nice and tight there. Well, here's Rebel, a three-year-old border collie handled by Mike Whitston, who's confident in his dog, but less confident in himself. <laughs> Her biggest challenge is me out on the course. If I can take and call everything out in time, then she go, she'll run real fast and real quick. Well, we'll take a look now because Rebel and Mike are off. Rebel has been competing for two years. Oh, oh. There was a mix-up there. I, I don't know. It looks like Mike ran into Rebel uh, and caused them to knock down a hurdle. Julie, what, what exactly happened That's here? That's right, Phil. Mike tried to cross behind Rebel, but actually cut her off. He ran into the dog as she was trying to jump the hurdle. 
Watch this. Take a look at the Oh, you can yeah. see it right there. That's when the two there made really contact. Was, there was no saving that from the dog's point of view. Of course, displacing a hurdle is one of the faults a dog can incur on course. Also included are refusals, a missed contact zone, any time over the standard course time, and an off course, which is elimination. The dogs need 10 faults or fewer to qualify in today's competition. Well, now at the starting line is Rusty, a seven-year-old border collie, handled by Caroline Wilde. Oh, that's a nice smooth opening. Rusty herds sheep for fun, she says. Did you notice how far uh, Caroline gets in front of Rusty before it starts? Yes, I'm going nice. let out. Nice, cautious weed poles. Now, now Rusty seems to be taking high jumps over the hurdles. Does that help in the run or does uh, it No, down? actually it does not. He is over jumping. He's uh, being careful, of course, not knocking any bars, but he is wasting time. Mm. And, of course, working his body harder than he needs to. Well, he was up on the table at 20 seconds. Continue with another nice uh, run. Yeah, this middle part of the course is going nice and smooth. Well, I'll tell you one thing that Caroline says, and you can see it. When they run, they say they both have smiles on their faces. <laughs> that was a nice approach to the A-frame, and he's very careful coming down. He's into his contact zone. That's the yellow area at the bottom of all the contact obstacles. You see the tunnel coming yes. to the final end? Yes, a nice and managed closing. 48.43 seconds and no faults for Rusty. Nice job. That qualifies him for the Nationals. Up at the starting line now is Pixie, a casing handled by Terry Smolch. The Pixie is a three-time defending AKC agility champion in the 16-inch class. That's right, Phil. Here in the USDAA qualifier, she has to jump 22 inches. She's a careful dog. She does not make many mistakes. Taking her time through his weed poles, but making sure she's doing well. That's right. Across the dog walk, and as you said before, making sure hitting all the contact zones. That's right. This is a this is a well polished Lie down. Lie down. team. Stay. Up on the table Stay. at 20 seconds Stay. with a five second count. Good. Look at Pixie's face. <laughs> Real extra time getting down there though. Yeah, she scrabbled off the table a little, but she's right on track. She, I don't think he intends to win this class. He wants to be clean, and he's very come, smart come, about it. Come, come, We've talked several times in Agility about having a fast run as opposed to a clean run. That's right. Pixie, come. Finishing with no fault. Good. Really. Look at that come tight management nice. fill in very that nice. tunnel. And as we come towards the end, 49.81 seconds, zero faults. Also, nice clean run. Well done. Well, here's Shelly Nichols and Scout, a four-and-a-half-year-old border collie who was too much to handle for several families. Scout was thought to be a problem dog and was going to be put down before he got one chance too many other dogs never get. They're lost, abandoned, and unloved. But for some here in Minnesota, there is at least hope. A second chance, thanks to an organization called Second Chance Rescue. Two of us started Second Chance Animal Rescue to save lives of animals who end up in animal control facilities, and that would be a stray dog or cat that accidentally got out of its owner's home, and if the owner doesn't reclaim them, they're put to sleep, or in Minnesota, they do suffer research. We um, advertised in the paper for volunteer foster homes, uh, word of mouth. Um, that's the only way we can save lives. If we have two foster homes open and there's 10 dogs and cats, we can only take two. So the biggest need for us is foster homes. Homes like this one in Stillwater, Minnesota, where Shelly Nichols was willing to make room for one more. Second Chance Animal Rescue called me and asked me if I would take Scout and just foster him until he was placed in a permanent home. I said, sure, I can do that. And within a day after I got Scout, I knew I was going to keep him. Before Shelly, three previous families had given up on Scout, unable to cope with his boundless energy. But Shelly channeled his Scout's energy into agility. Now he's a great athlete and a great friend. Scout is a, a great pet. Um, he's very loyal and he always is by my side. So I really um, am grateful for Second Chance, you know, that they gave Scout another chance. And Scout's full name is Scout's Last Chance because I, it was his last chance before he was going to be put to sleep. You know, when we hear the success stories, it makes it all worthwhile. This is why we do it. I really think that everybody should at least one time rescue a dog and give a dog a chance. And it is now the chance for Scout to make his run. Shelly says Scout is a shrieker, 
He thinks it's Scout's way of telling everybody he's having a good time. He does make a lot of noise on course, but there's no penalty for that, as long as he can hear her directions. It's a pretty quick and wild opening, Phil. Well, it was a close call in that up contact with the uh, dog walk there. Yeah, yeah, they're just barely staying in communication. <laughs> <laughs> now up on the table at 18 seconds. That was the second fastest time in this competition. He is fast. What they lack in efficiency, they are making up in speed. Nice speed through the tunnel there. Ooh, kind of half falls off the seesaw sideways. Little spin there, and that, that cuts into the time there. It sure does. A little wild there through the pinwheel, but she's hanging on to him. She's trying to tighten up there. Oh, my God. Look at this. One into the wrong end of the tunnel. That's considered an off course. That's oh. right, and that is an elimination. She just playing backed up a little bit too early. Oh, my goodness. But that was a nice run up there to the end. Well, next once again is Terry Smirch, this time handling Remy of Border College. This is a very young dog, Terry's up-and-coming star. She's quite different from running his case and pixie. Off to a very fast start. Boy, she is quick. That is the thing I like about Border College. Look at the speed for the weave poles. The intensity, very tight. He <laughs> followed his body cue. Beautiful oh contacts, Phil. And up onto the table, 15 seconds. That matches the fastest time thus far. This is this is just a lovely run. She's calm, she's quick, she's focused. Oh, oh, oh my goodness, Terry. Terry looks like he's hurt there. Looks like a problem with his knee. He's going to try to run on, though. Trying to... No question about it. Oh, my he goodness. Needs to stop running. Yeah. That, okay, it looks like we're talking about a little more than a twist here. Oh, my goodness. He's grabbing his knee. He's stopping here. Looks like we may have a, uh, a serious injury here. Oh, my goodness. Terry. Beautifully trained Terry dog is not going to leave him and do obstacles without permission. And he is amazingly trying to direct her through the rest of the I am really and watching doing his, so. his commitment here and, and, and Remy's focus on him. But this looks like this is a serious injury. He's going to have to get off this course. Judge Janet Gaunt now is helping Terry off the course. Let's take a look and see just what happened. The problem actually begins on the table. Remy leaves the table in the wrong direction, and Terry, in his haste to try to fix all that, has pivot shifted and just twisted his knee terribly. We'll check in on Terry and see how he's doing when we come back. Don't go away. We're still bobbing and weaving our way to the Agility Championship here on Animal Planet. USDAA Grand Prix of Dog Agility is sponsored in part by Hill Science Diet. Nothing keeps your pet healthier. I became a vet because I love animals. I love to see them grow and keep them healthy. And nothing keeps pets healthier than Hill Science Diet, the only one with a superior antioxidant formula and higher levels of vitamin C and E that has the best nutrition, best ingredients, and the best taste. No wonder it's the number one choice of vets. I'm going to be a vet when I grow up. Hill Science Diet, nothing keeps your pet healthier. Okay, ladies, look at all the places you can get your oil changed. Still, you don't make it in every 3,000 miles like you should, because you're too busy. Come on, where are your nurturing instincts? Be nice. Save an engine. This is reformulated Quaker State. Protection beyond 3,000 miles under any driving conditions. It's been tested. And unlike some people's plans to change their oil on time, it works. Anybody say insurance? Reformulated Quaker State. Ask for it. What more do you need to know? There is a rhythm to life. We sleep at night and wake in the morning. It's this sleep cycle that helps keep us in a healthy balance. But for millions of Americans, sleep doesn't always come easy. Fortunately, there's Ambien. Ambien is a prescription sleep aid that can help you get a full night's sleep. With Ambien, you fall asleep fast, stay asleep longer, and generally wake without feeling groggy the next morning. No wonder Ambien is the number one prescribed sleep aid in America. Until you know how Ambien will affect you, you shouldn't drive or operate machinery. Side effects may include drowsiness, dizziness, and diarrhea. You shouldn't take it with alcohol. Patients who abuse prescription sleep aids may become dependent. Prescription sleep aids are most often taken for 7 to 10 days as needed. Your doctor will advise you about taking them longer. Take Ambien only when you can devote a full night to sleep and wake up rested and ready to start your day. Talk to your doctor about Ambien. Ambien works like a dream. These stores work for peanuts and occasional banana. You want more money? Your agent's on the phone. On an all-new emergency vet. She was just kind of dangling upside down. A black cat has a freaky streak of bad luck. And fasten your seatbelts. It's going to be a bumpy night. 
tomorrow night at 10, only on Animal Planet. Now back to the Agility Dog action on Animal Planet. The ambulance is on his way, and here's Phil with Terry Smorch. What exactly? When, <laughs> what went down? Yeah. Well, um, we were at the table. We were fine up to that point. Dog was running good. I, I was feeling good. And I turned to go to the teeter, or the, t the tire, and uh, I didn't point my dog at the tire so she went after the A-frame, and I turned to bring her back in, and my left foot was on the ground, and I pivoted. My leg, bottom leg did not pivot. My upper leg did, and it appears that I have a serious knee injury. Wow. I mean, everybody heard it here, but I, what's amazing to me, and everybody, we had, actually had a laugh through all of this, over the fact that, to the, to the end, you're like a dog man, talking about, oh, I should have done this, should have done that, not about the injury, not about the animal, we're talking the sport, this is a gamer right here, he's got game. Listen, man, we wish you all the best, the ambulance Thanks. is coming, we're going to take care of you, and uh, we'll see you in the next time. All right. Take care now. Thanks. Thanks. Well, we hope it's not too serious with Terry. Oh, yeah. Next up on the line is Crazy Alice, a six-year-old border collie, handled by Judith Michelle from Woodbury, Minnesota. Well, Jim is another one of these people that's way out in front of the dog. Nice big lead out. Alice and Judy have been oh, competing for five years now. This Alice looks good. She's very efficient, very nicely focused. It was great weaves there. Very clever, smooth transition from six to seven. Managing very carefully. Carefully on the contacts. <laughs> Up on the table at 17 seconds. She knows she doesn't have to worry about speed, Phil. She's in it for a clean run. She wants to stay clean. Good. Coming off the table, handling from the far side of the tire. Another carefully managed contact and a very smooth and efficient pinwheel, nice and tight. The time to beat is 42.44 seconds, heading into the final tunnel. A couple of hurdles left here at the end. Great run so far. As we get to the finish line, they have a time of 47.88 seconds, zero fault. She should be very pleased with that run, Phil. It was very carefully managed. On the replay, we saw Linda Mecklenburg earlier take the inside route along the weave poles, and here Judith prefers to go outside and pull her dog to the next hurdle, setting Alice up for the dog walk. Another nice, tight performance. Different handling style, same accomplishment. Well, at the starting line next is Cinder, a mixed breed, handled by Ron Stefanik. This is a five-year-old rescue dog. Yeah, you know, Ron's wife works at an animal clinic, and Cinder been brought in as a puppy after being trapped behind a refrigerator where her skin actually froze to the coil. And Cinder was horribly burned and was going to be euthanized, but Ron and his wife nursed her back to health. And after four years of training, she's competing in her first agility trial. Lovely story. What a beautiful dog. Table down. I love rescue stories. Up on the table at 22 seconds. Good. Calm, efficient teamwork. Very nice working dog, Phil. Very cautious about making the contacts. As you see, me right over there, the teeter totter. Yeah. Taking the time. Come up. What? Another well managed pinwheel. Nice approach to the A frame. Good contact on the downside. Good. Nice and tight into that closing tunnel. Let's see how they handle the box. Good job. <laughs> All right. Great job. 52.63 seconds, zero false. Good run for Cinder. Very nice run. Cinder qualifies for the championships. So here are the final results. Awesome is awesome. Taking the class by more than five and a half seconds, followed by Crazy Alice and Rusty. Now here's Julie with a win. I especially was interested in how you picked him up coming out of that number 18 tunnel going into the closing two jumps. He looked like he didn't quite know which side of you to be on. Yeah, that, that didn't go quite as I had planned. I was trying to get a head start on him for the 19 and 20, the last two jumps, and he came out out of that tunnel a little faster than I was expecting and came out a little straight from the tunnel and that ended up putting him behind me so I had to wait to pick him up on my right side so I could finish out 19 and 20 with him yep. on my right. Nice save. Thank you very much. The bar is going up and we'll be back with more agility from Minnesota on Animal Planet. When it comes to agility, these guys are the best. There's more action to come here on Animal Planet. This Wednesday on O'Shea's Big Adventure. This venomous viper almost killed him. Now Mark's going in for a rematch. Will he survive the devil that nearly did him in? It's O'Shea's Big Adventure. This Wednesday at 10, only on Animal Planet. On the next Extreme Contact, you thought you've seen it all. Now Manny, Mark, and Megan take a dip with the Swimming Monkeys. That's right, Swimming Monkeys. An episode guaranteed to make a splash. On the next all-new Extreme Contact, Wednesday at 10.30, only on Animal Planet. USDAA Grand Prix of Dog Agility is sponsored in part by PetSafe. Safe pets, happy owners. Can't keep your
your dog in the yard? Try new Instant Fence from PetSafe. Instant Fence uses a radio signaling collar to create a safety zone for your pet. But there are no wires or digging. Just plug it in. And Instant Fence costs less than standard fencing. Keep your dog in your yard with Instant Fence from PetSafe. Look for new Instant Fence in PetSafe's complete line of pet products at your local home center and pet superstore. I became a vet because I love animals. I love to see them grow and keep them healthy. And nothing keeps pets healthier than Hills Science Diet, the only one with a superior antioxidant formula and higher levels of vitamin C and E that has the best nutrition, best ingredients, and the best taste. No wonder it's the number one choice of vets. I'm going to be a vet when I grow up. Hills Science Diet, nothing keeps your pet healthier. Look out! Do you want to avoid the mess and stress of keeping your dog clean and odor-free? Introducing Minute Groom, the no-water, no-hassle cleaning and grooming formula used by professionals. Minute Groom is quick and easy to use. Just spray it on and towel it off, and instantly your dog is clean and odor-free. Minute Groom's special formula magically unlocks and lifts dirt from your dog's fur, leaving it clean, soft, shiny, and smelling great. Now, tangles and mats are no problem. Spray on Minute Groom and brush right through. Control seasonal shedding. Clean muddy paws in seconds. Safely clean stains around eyes and face. Eliminate everyday dog odors. Even get rid of skunk odor. In fact, Minute Groom is 100% guaranteed to leave your pet clean and odor free in just minutes for your full money back. You spray it on, you wipe it off, it's easy to use, it takes away all the tangles, it makes my dog smell wonderful, and she looks like she's just come back from the groomers. Your dog may look clean, but Minute Groom cleans right down to the skin, removing the dirt you can't see. I just spray it on, towel it off, the dirt comes right off, give her a good brushing, and she's sparkly white. Minute Groom's safe, all-natural formula can be used indoors or out, and creates an invisible shield of protection against ticks and fleas. It's great for cats, too. As a veterinarian, I highly recommend Minute Groom because it's quick and easy to use. It doesn't dry out animal skin like a lot of other products, and I love it. I use it on my golden retriever and on my patients here at the hospital. One trip to the groomer could cost you $50, but call now and get a jumbo bottle of Minute Groom for only $19.95. As a free bonus, we'll include a full-size refill at no extra charge. Plus, order in the next five minutes and get a handy-sized bottle of Minute Groom absolutely free free. For rush delivery, call this toll-free number or send $19.95 plus shipping and handling to Minute Groom, P.O. Box 2220, Agoura Hills, California, 91376. Remember, call now to receive your free bottle of Minute Groom. Order now. Hello, fellow partial eating fish. Hello there. Have you heard about the website called discovery.com? Why, yes. It has interesting facts about the world we live in. And lots of practical information on stuff like health, traveling, and pets. Wow. They even have the news and weather. I never thought I'd get a credit card until I called Providian. They gave me the chance to prove myself with a Visa secured card. Now, my credit's going up, up, up. And I got a Visa Gold with a $1,000 credit line and no savings deposit. No card helps you build your credit faster. And because I was responsible, they increased my limit. And nothing feels like gold in the palm of your hand. I have a few cards in my wallet, but this is my first gold card. And with Providian, my credit just keeps getting better. You know, gold means a higher credit line and more perks. Hey, people treat you differently when you have a gold card, but nothing compares to the prestige of platinum. I got a great rate, high credit line, and no annual fee. This is definitely the Visa card for me. Which one's right for you? At Providian, it's never been easier to get the credit you deserve. Visa Classic to build or rebuild your credit. Visa Gold with up to $1,000 in instant credit. Or the purchasing power of Visa Platinum. Call now for approval right over the phone. Visa from Providian. We approve. Now back to the Agility Dog Action on Animal Planet. Welcome back to Minnesota. Time now for the 26-inch class. Fourth standard is 58 seconds. 
And up first is Spiffy, five-year-old border collie, handled once again by Linda Mecklenburg. Spiffy is the 1997 national champion, but we are off oh, to a problematic God. start. We have a refusal. She's caught on the wrong side of jump number three coming out of that shoe. Now she's safely into the wee pole, but she leaves the wee pole oh, early. Goodness. She skipped the last pole, and as soon as she jumps the next hurdle without correcting her wee pole, she is off course, Phil. That's an elimination. Oh, That's too bad. Well, up next is Secret, a four-and-a-half-year-old border collie, handled by Stacy Pirda. Secret's been competing for two-and-a-half years. Very quick dog. Nice, fast start for Secret. Quick weaver. Good and well-managed over the number six jump. Secret seems very focused. Whoa, that was close there that on that down contact. Down. Up on the Don't table at stay. 16 seconds. Good time. Stay. Stay, stay. <laughs> Stacy also handles the higher tunnel combination from the offside. Pulls to the pinwheel. Pretty good. Mm, recovery. Started to go wide, but mm -hmm. right back in. There we go. Nice and tight into the number 18 tunnel. Over. All right. With a great time of 43.88 seconds and zero faults. Incredible speed on these wee poles and over the dog walk like a hovercraft. <laughs> Floats right over there. Great job. Well, we have a, an 11 year old mixed breed coming up next, Tasha, handled by Barney Greek. Tasha competes in the veterans classes. 11 years old. Mm. Cutting back on competition, she says, because of her age. <laughs> Very cautiously through the weed poles. Yeah, it's a pretty strenuous obstacle. This is a very honest performing dog, Phil, and by that I mean whatever she thinks the job is supposed to be, that's what she wants to do. She's not trying to design her own course. She's not overly opinionated. She's cooperative. She's very responsive to Stacy also. Yes. Turn up, turn up. Go, 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 go. Well managed through the middle part of the course. Maintaining her enthusiasm as well for 11 years old. Well into her conduct. Let's see how tight she can handle this closing sequence. And good. Bonnie's smart. She's running with her through the box. Good for her. Great job. And Tasha finishes with a time of 15.10 seconds, zero fault. Nice clean run, as you like to That's say. That's right. She qualifies for the championships. Coming up next is Caesar, a five and a half year old Rottweiler, handled by Jennifer Voss. Jennifer says Caesar is the greatest, sweetest, most intelligent ham. <laughs> That's a dog that likes to show off. Uh -huh. And again, another very cautious weaver. Yes. Taking, taking the time. We're on the wrong side of jump number six here. It's a, it's a tight turn, as you can see, from the exit of the wee poles. Just loop over to catch the number six jump before heading over to the dog walk. It's difficult for a big dog like that. He doesn't have a, a short turning radius. No, Jennifer says he's usually the biggest dog on the course, and Jen thinks he's an inspiration for his fellow canine competitors. Yeah, you don't see too many Rottweilers in agility at this level. He's a pretty good jumper. Look at the impact he has on that tunnel. <laughs> his size just rocks the tunnel. You know, he has beautiful contacts, Phil. Again, he does not have a short turning radius, but he does have very nice contacts. You know, Jen says that Caesar doesn't run the course. He bounces through the course with a big old smile on his face. <laughs> he does smile. <laughs> Now Jen is trying to get him turned for this tight closing and it can't be oh, done. He's off course through goodness. the chute. Instead of going through the tunnel. Correct. Oh, gosh. That is an elimination, but she finishes up an otherwise nice run. It was a very nice run to watch. Well, here's another breed you don't see that often in agility. Hannah, a six and a half year old Doberman Pinscher, Hannah by Tama Johnson. Whoa, oh. Hannah starts the course while Tama's back is still turned. Not a good sign. Remember, it is the dog who starts the time clock. Now, usually is not a good sign. We have a disagreement going on about the weep holes. A lot of discussion about where we're going next. Dog needs to wait for permission. Now, these two are really seem to be having some communications difficulties here. They certainly are, Phil, and uh, he's missed a couple of contact zones. Down! Little, little hesitant in getting down on the table. There we go. All right, looks like we finally got... Oh. <laughs> Spoken too soon. Yeah. The dog must remain on the table and remain down for the five-second count. Looks like we got it in there. Another quick spin. 
And off oh course. my goodness, what did wrong in the tunnel? That's correct, an off course and elimination. This course does seem to be getting the better of the 26 inch class, Phil. Yeah, it seems that way, Julie, because so far we've seen back to back eliminations so far. Wow. Julie noted by the score table. And ready to make the next run is Stopper, a six and a half year old golden retriever handled by Shirley Wallace. There's a nice smooth opening. Shirley says that Stopper does have a mind of her own. Get it, get it, get it. We've seen that right here. Demonstrated right there. I don't think she ever saw those weed pulls. There we go. Good. Every run. And nice response out to the number six jump and over the dog walk very smoothly. We're back on track, Phil. Yeah. Well, little step there going up to the table. Nice recover up there, maybe. Wait, calm and focused. Get out! Almost misunderstood there. The stopper lives in a house full of sled pulling huskies, so a lot of athletes in that house. Very efficient turns through this pinwheel. Well done. Careful contacts. Listen to her contact cue. Uh, 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 uh. And another dog. Oh, misunderstands. Stop and puts his head in the shoe. That is an off course. Wow, that's the third elimination. Well, at the starting line right now is Red, a four and a half year old Border Collie handled by Kim Fuse. Well, Kim has only had Red for six months, so we'll see how the uh, lack of experience uh, plays in this run. That could be very important. That's not much time. Oh, how nicely he jumps. Oh. This is his weave pole entry. That is a very difficult entry. The handlers need to be managing that. Oh, nice handler save there, Phil. She really smoothly redirected him. Yes, he was going to go directly to the dog walk. He does come off early now. That's ten faults now. He needs to stay clean the rest of his run. Ten faults is the maximum he can have and still qualify for the national. He's certainly fast enough. She pushes to the correct entrance of the tunnel. Smoothly done. Nice Very contact nice. over the tee, the title. Beautiful seesaw, Phil, and also a beautiful pinwheel. Fast and tight. Cool. Doesn't need to worry about fast. Yeah. This has got to be a clean run, and so far... Tight into the correct entrance of the tunnel, but we're in trouble now. They're falling over each other. She's saving it so far. Oh, oh my goodness, that last bar cost them in qualifying. Here's our second five fault penalty. They leave the downside dog walk contact too early. Now they're in trouble coming out of the tunnel. They collide and they just can't hold it together for jump number 20. Well, our last dog in the 20 census class is Bounce, a flat coated retriever handled by Sarah Gracek. They've only been competing for a year. Sarah calls her a creative problem solver. Very big jumper here. So she's over jumping, wasting a lot of time in the air. We call that hang time. She'd be a lot faster on the ground than jumping that high. Nice contact. Just barely in, but that's good enough. Only one pause required. Down. A little time on the table there. She got up there at 22 seconds. A little spin, but now she's down. And for the five count. She's off again. And another handler who pushes to the correct entrance of the tunnel. Nice ascent to the seesaw. Oh, off early. That's five faults right there. Right. Oh. Now we have a bar down. So we have ten faults total. Must stay clean. The rest of this run. Good. Well managed into the correct entrance of the closing tunnel and through the box. Final sequence here. And Done. the time is 55.05 seconds with 10 faults. So she qualifies. Here's that bar that falls at number 14. Over jumping doesn't always mean we leave the bars up. Sigur was the best of the high jumpers by over six seconds. Only three dogs qualified in this class and Julie's with our winners right now. I was interested in why you handled Secret off your left side coming off the table this time. Well, actually I had two reasons. Um, reason number one was because I felt more comfortable pulling the dog towards me to indicate the proper tunnel entrance. And the second reason was I knew that I wanted to cross to the other side of the teeter-totter. Um, if I had stayed on the other side of the tunnel, given this dog's speed, I never would have beat her and I would have been stuck on the wrong side of the teeter, which would have made the rest of the course more difficult. Well done. Thank you. Uh, up a little higher. Right there. Uh, uh, we'll be right back. Uh. Skinny poles, crazy tubes, and teeter-totters. The agility dogs will return here on Animal Planet. Animal Planet Big Cat Diet. Doing whatever it takes. She's on foot. Go, 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 go. To create the most compelling, up close, and personal series. Ah, oh, not again. This side of the Sahara. Big Cat Diet. Tomorrow at 9, only on Animal Planet. I became a vet because I love animals. I love to see them grow and keep them healthy.
And nothing keeps pets healthier than Hills Science Diet, the only one with a superior antioxidant formula and higher levels of vitamin C and E that has the best nutrition, best ingredients, and the best taste. No wonder it's the number one choice of vets. I'm going to be a vet when I grow up. Hills Science Diet. Nothing keeps your pet healthier. Keep your dog in the yard? Try new Instant Fence from PetSafe. Instant Fence uses a radio signal and collar to create a safety zone for your pet. But there are no wires or digging. Just plug it in. And Instant Fence costs less than standard fencing. Keep your dog in your yard with Instant Fence from PetSafe. Look for new Instant Fence in PetSafe's complete line of pet products at your local home center and pet superstore. I'll be right back with your new low Geico rate. Great. I can save you over $250. Every week, 10,000 drivers switch their car insurance to GEICO. We take all the necessary precautions. GEICO Direct. A 15-minute call could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Busy day. What? This is the PC that led to a website that came to life on a bright, vivid monitor that triggered a question that went round the world at the speed of an Intel Pentium 3 processor that created a friendship that inspired an idea that opened more than one set of eyes. This is the Compact Presario 5000T with one-touch internet access that can lead to great things. Call Compaq at 1-800-329-9281 and get the PC and monitor for just $8.99. And who knows where your kids will end up, because this is the PC that fuels the imagination that lets your kids see the whole world wider. The Compact Presario 5000T with Intel Pentium 3 processor. Call 1-800-329-9281 and add a Compaq IJ300 color printer for a dollar. Now back to the Agility Dog Action on Animal Planet. to Minnesota for the Grand Prix of Dog Agility Regional Qualifier. With me, of course, is Julie Daniels, and we're getting ready for the Shorter Height class. Now, Julie, how does this course set up for our low riders? <laughs> Phil, the small dogs can really stretch out and run today, which will help them with the A-frame, a six-foot-three tall obstacle, which sometimes gives small dogs trouble. But today, there's more than 20 feet from the jump to the A-frame. They can get up a good head of steam, and we should see some good performances by our little dogs today. Now it's time for the lowest in the four height classes, the 12 inch class. Standard course time for this group is a minute and one second. First up is a five year old toy fox terrier whose handler has a couple of concerns. The biggest challenge we have um, in this point of our career are contacts. He, does, he seems to uh, want to uh, say leave, leave before he's supposed to. And then also um, the down on the table is a bit challenging. He doesn't like to stop very well. Down. Well, here he is up on the table now at 20 seconds. See how he handles it. Well done so far. A little bit of talking back. Well, he did quite well. Here, take her here. Yes. She saves that. She will not be charged with a refusal there. Vanessa and Tigger, too, have been competing for two years now. And Nancy goes into the pocket and works the entire pinwheel every jump. It's a good strategy for her. You can tell this dog has a lot of energy, but it's very focused. Right through the closing. Very clean. Very nice. And the time is 52.35 seconds. Zero faults. Next is Amico, a four-year-old Sheltie whose handler says is a precision machine. This dog is so responsive to my every move. I have to constantly be aware of my uh, motion, my tipping of my shoulders, the angle of my feet in order to have a run successfully with me. Jim and Amico are repeating the weeples. They missed the entry. Now they're back on track. That was five fells for missing that entry. What? Beautiful. Up contact on the dog walk. And he is careful about this down contact. Table? Down. Up on the table in down. 26 seconds. Down. You can tell the dog would rather work than stop. Stay. Stay. 
another handle that pushes to the correct entrance of the tunnel, and then he crosses to handle the seesaw with the dog on his right, crosses again to put the dog on the left for the pinwheel, nicely done through the pinwheel, tight, fast. He does leap off his contacts, Phil, but he's in them. All right, we're going into the finish here. And, oh, knocks down the bar. See, this going to cost him at the end. Oh, that falls the time of 59.66 seconds. Hey, he qualifies by less than one and a half seconds. Here's that missed entry to the weave poles. That's his first five fault penalty. He must go back and fix that. And now we take the bar at jump number 19. We have Tuvok, a five and a half year old Karen Terrier, handled by Doreen D'Alessandro. Tuvok has a CD in obedience, a companion dog title. Doreen says he's mellow for a terrier, but he has their characteristic independent streak. He cautiously making his way through the roof poles there. There we go. And on to the dog walk. Tail up and wagging. He's a happy little dog, very honest about his contact zones. <laughs> Not too interested in the table. A little hesitation in jumping up there, but once up and staying down for the full five count. Doreen says he likes to use her as an obstacle. Good. Nice commitment to the seesaw. I like that. Mm -hmm. And good contacts on both ends of it. Mm -hmm. Good. She motivates her dog by running with him. That's a good strategy. And she front crosses at the A-frame. Good. She gets a head start toward the closing. Good strategy. Easy. As we come down to the final segments of the goal, we have 5.56 faults. All of them are time faults. Well, here's Andy, a four-year-old Papillon, whose handler has no trouble naming her dog's biggest challenge. We poles. <laughs> That's really the only challenge we have is weave poles. We just, he doesn't like the weaves and so he tries to pass them up every time he gets a chance. And he's been competing for two years. And here come those dreaded weave poles. She's trying very hard to manage that entry and just eats it out for him. Good handling by Renee. Good job by Andy. There, nice to get those out of the way early. He does a nice job on the dog walk. Well, Julie, as a handler, do you like getting the toughest challenge out of the way early in the course? Absolutely. It's nice to check that off the list. The dog relaxes, the handler relaxes. Let's see how the rest of the course goes for them. <laughs> she pulls her dog to the correct entrance of the tunnel rather than push. It's a perfectly good strategy. Is there any advantage to the strategy, pulling or pushing? No, it's a preference issue. And this dog is not a hard driving dog, so he has some trouble getting up and over the A-frame, but he's honest. There are a lot of Papillons in agility. It's one of the most popular breeds for small dogs. Well, as we come to the finish, we see that Andy does indeed qualify with 7.91 faults. Now, waiting at the starting line is Tia, a two-year-old corgi, handled by Stacy Perda, who we saw in the 26-inch division. Now, Julie, is there an advantage to handling more than one dog in one competition? Mm, most of us think so. We like to run the course as many times as possible. Some dogs are handled very differently from others, so we have to change our strategy slightly from dog to dog, but it's still an advantage overall. Now, she had a little problem getting in that weed pole, mm -hmm. but when she got into it, she flew right through him. He's a quick little thing. Stacy is not leaving till she's in the yellow. Good. Little pause. Just touch the top there. <laughs> well managed. <laughs> They're having a discussion. Stay. Stay. <laughs> Remember, the barking is not penalized. Into the tunnel. Very confident, aggressive little worker. Smart, smart dog. Only been competing for six months. Very nice, tight turn. She wrapped around that number 17 jump and very tightly into her closing sequence. And with only five balls, finishes with a time of 55.34 seconds. And Tia's time is good enough for second place. But in the 12-inch class, it goes to Tigger 2, who was the only dog in the field to run clean and was the fastest to boot. Time now for the agility training tip for the makers of Science Diet. 
closed tunnel or chute is an obstacle that can make the dogs afraid if they don't realize that they can burst out into the daylight. So when we teach this obstacle, we collect the fabric and show the dog the daylight. Hey Spring, want a cookie? As the dog gains confidence, we gradually make the chute longer and longer. Now it's halfway. Hey Spring! Okay. And now she's got the confidence to run the whole shoot. Here we go. Spring, shoot! Good girl! Good girl! <laughs> Don't go away. We're still bobbing and weaving our way to the Agility Championship here on Animal Planet. On the next Keepers, sniffing out injuries before they turn into tragedies. Catch it early. Keep a small problem small. Don't let it get to be a big problem. See how keen observations put four-legged friends on the road to recovery. On the next Keepers, tomorrow at 9.30, only on Animal Planet on an all-new emergency vet. She was just kind of dangling upside down. A black cat has a freaky streak of bad luck. And fasten your seatbelts, it's gonna be a bumpy night. Tomorrow night at 10, only on Animal Planet. Can't keep your dog in the yard? Try new Instant Fence from PetSafe. Instant Fence uses a radio signaling collar to create a safety zone for your pet. But there are no wires or digging. Just plug it in. And Instant Fence costs less than standard fencing. Keep your dog in your yard with Instant Fence from PetSafe. Look for new Instant Fence in PetSafe's complete line of pet products at your local home center and pet superstore. I became a vet because I love animals. I love to see them grow and keep them healthy. And nothing keeps pets healthier than Hills Science Diet, the only one with a superior antioxidant formula and higher levels of vitamin C and E that has the best nutrition, best ingredients, and the best taste. No wonder it's the number one choice of vets. I'm going to be a vet when I grow up. Hills Science Diet, nothing keeps your pet healthier. Everybody has suffered from the effects of a bad night's sleep, whether from minor back pain, heartburn, or just because you can't get comfortable. And the constant tossing and turning at night can make you feel like you're in the middle of a cliffhanger. We at Sleep Comfort want to mail you our free video and brochure showing how our adjustable bed can give you that better night's sleep you've always dreamed about. Our soothing massage and pillow top mattress gives you the feeling you're in a tropical paradise. And the dream gets better because now adjustable beds have become affordable for everyone. With no money down, our Jubilee model is only $19 per month. And we give you 90 days to sleep on our bed with no risk. If you don't like it, send it back. So call now to receive this free video and brochure about the adjustable bed that only costs $19 per month and comes with a free 90-day in-home trial. Call now. Call 1-800-816-9888. That's 1-800-816-9888. Now back to the agility dog action on Animal Planet. Yeah, I don't want to go ask too many doggies here. What are you talking about? Welcome back to Minnesota. Time now for the 16-inch height class. Standard course time is a minute even. And first up will be Sasha, handled by Giselle Savage. This is a nine-year-old Cocker Spaniel who's been competing for more than seven years. Look at that energy. This handler has managed the wee pole entry very effectively. Nice, smooth transition from the number six jump to the dog walk. Now, you know one thing I notice about this handler is how quiet this particular handler is. That's very true. She's very effective with her body and does some hand clapping. Her voice is very quiet, you're right. Sasa really seems to take her, her commands or her leads from the body language. Very nice working dog. Smooth team. <laughs> Good breaks. <laughs> Oh dear, she loses her in the pinwheel at number 14. She is off course. <laughs> Look at this, we have a couple of kids have wandered onto the field. Wow, this is, anything can happen at agility. I mean, we saw, we saw Terry and his knee and then we got a couple of kids just roaming around. <laughs> I want to play with the dogs. <laughs> Look, Mom, take me back. As you can see, Giselle loses Sasha in the pinwheel, and she was eliminated for going over the wrong obstacle before she met the unexpected company at the A-frame. Next up is Abby, a five-and-a-half-year-old Kaysen, handled by Cynthia Ernest. <laughs> now this is totally the opposite of the first, the last handler. Very vocal with Cynthia. That's right. A lot of cheerleading going on here. And 
some discussion. There we go. She gets Abby fired up and is very carefully managing every aspect of this course. Some disagreement about the table, but she's down. That's Abby's the important gonna, thing. Abby's giving a little bit of talking back. You see that concentration? See you looking Abby right now. Okay, a blind cross at the tunnel where she turns her back on the dog. She has plenty of time to do that. Good. Nice tight turns through the pinwheel. Good work with Another the blind cross. Uh huh. Good. I like this getting a head start on the closing to lead the dog through the box. Good strategy. Having a nice clean run with no faults. Finishing with a time of 56. Well, this is Pat Howe's first attempt to qualify for the Grand Prix, and she's more worried about herself than about her dog, Avery. He's the first dog that I've shown in agility, and he's done really well. He's better than his handler, which is me, and he's come up too fast, really, for me to keep up with him in my handling ability. Go, 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 I like the little hops through the weed pole. That was very nicely managed. She handled the weed poles from the other side. Go, 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 go. Again, runs the course with her dog. There's nothing wrong with that. Up onto the table at 22 seconds. Well-trained dog holds it down while Pat moves away. Come, come. He's a very enthusiastic little dog. And the contacts on the things, the two tires, the eight things, very good. That's right. He has good contacts, nice and tight through the pinwheel. Now, the time to beat is 56.57 seconds. This dog is really flying. He's zippy. He can do it. Well, let's take a look here when we get to the end. And sure enough, he did do it, beating the time with 54.13 seconds. Avery leaps into the lead. Well, up next is Casey, an 11-year-old mixed breed, handled by Diane Barlow, another older dog running now. Mm, that's right. Casey's an active therapy dog who visits a nursing home twice a month. He has obedience titles. He's an excellent tracker, his owner said, and he once found two missing dogs. Wow. He's kind of a dog being a rescue dog. That's right. Look at that tail go. <laughs> Very cautious coming over the dog walk. He was careful, but he knew he was right. Don't. Okay. Don't. On the table at 25. And again, a little bit of time taken getting down on the table. Mm -hmm. Look at that face. What a nice smile. Go, 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 go. He's snappy in his tunnels, and he has full commitment to the seesaw. Get out. He feels Get pretty out. good. Come. There we go, Come. nice and tight through the pinwheel. Charges his A-frame, full commitment. Well, Dan says he also likes to help around the farm by rounding up chickens who try to escape. Uh, he looks like a dog who's a lot of fun. <laughs> Big jumps at the end, with zero false finishes with a time of 59.66 seconds. Well, Jenny is at the starting line, a Shetland Street dog, handled by Casey Culpepper. Casey is the son of Renee Culpepper, we saw earlier. Jenny actually belongs to Casey's sister, Tracy. That is beautifully done. He handled that so smoothly. His timing was impeccable. The dog is zippy and fast. Whoa. Now she's taken a bit of a face plant. She looks fine and ready to continue, but Casey decides to call at the end of the run. It's his choice. Better safe than sorry. Let's take a look at what happened here. She just slipped. She left three cleats up and just landed on her side and uh, was probably ready to continue. I think she's fine. All right. Well, next up is Glass, a three-year-old Shetland Sheep dog, handled by Debbie Brink. This is the youngest of three dogs Debbie's competing with today. <laughs> this is a little pistol. <laughs> Talk it all the way through. Uh huh. Smoothly handled over the number six jump. <laughs> little overzealous. Which are contact zones. Wow. Up on the table in 18 seconds. That was the fastest time thus far for this height class. Very fast, little dog. Now, Debbie is a two time national champion. And Blast is the granddaughter of Shauna, who has won the national twice. But I believe this is Blast's first time qualifying herself. She lost, lost a little momentum over the A-frame, but she did manage to stick the contact zone. They're, they're discussing this closing sequence, but so far they're managing it. And as we come to the end, she finishes with a time of 52.82 seconds with five faults. We'll be back with more right after this.
When it comes to agility, these guys are the best. There's more action to come here on Animal Planet. Hello, Meteor. Hello, Meteor. Have you heard about the website called discovery.com? Discovery.com is my guidebook for life. I learned how to plant an herb garden, train my dog, and cure my dandruff. I learned that most meteors burn up in Earth's atmosphere. Ah! The atmosphere! Ah! ah the atmosphere! dog in the yard? Try new Instant Fence from PetSafe. Instant Fence uses a radio signaling collar to create a safety zone for your pet. But there are no wires or digging. Just plug it in. And Instant Fence costs less than standard fencing. Keep your dog in your yard with Instant Fence from PetSafe. Look for new Instant Fence in PetSafe's complete line of pet products at your local home center and pet superstore. I became a vet because I love animals. I love to see them grow and keep them healthy. And nothing keeps pets healthier than Hill's Science Diet, the only one with a superior antioxidant formula and higher levels of vitamin C and E that has the best nutrition, best ingredients, and the best taste. No wonder it's the number one choice of vets. I'm going to be a vet when I grow up. Hill's Science Diet, nothing keeps your pet healthier. On the next Extreme Contact, you thought you've seen it all. Now Manny, Mark, and Megan take a dip with the Swimming Monkeys. That's right, Swimming Monkeys. An episode guaranteed to make a splash. On the next all-new Extreme Contact, Wednesday at 10.30, only on Animal Planet. Animal Planet's a pet story. Real people. And I heard you already. Real pets. Sharing real stories that can only be told from the heart. Love you. Animal Planet's new series, A Pet Story. Weekdays at 4 Eastern, only on Animal Planet. Coming up next, an old friend pays Miles a visit. Can Buck and John Thornton find him in time? It's Call of the Wild, next on Animal Planet. For more information about the sport of dog agility and other USDA events, call 1-888-AGILITY. Or you can do the e-thing and write info at usdaa.com. Next up is Chili, a Jack Russell Terrier, handled by Bonnie Greep. So Bonnie, earlier today, finished in second place with Tasha in the 26-inch class. This is a fast little dog. Now, she didn't handle those weak pulls very well, and she's caused a missed entry, but they're back on track now. Chili just started competing this summer. Very smooth transition from number six to seven. Oh, oh wow. Great save there. I'm glad uh, Chili landed on her feet. That kind of accident is frightening, but the dog uh, seemed to have it under control. They just started competing together this summer. They've also started fly ball training. Now she's missed that seesaw entirely. Hammer didn't stay committed. And Chili has and no intention again. of remaining committed. I think she's doing the right thing here now, not to press the dog for uh, completion of these obstacles. Don't don't worry about it. Just uh, at this point, yeah. get back on track together as a team. It's a good experience to just finish, oh, that's the right. finish on a happy note, doing things that the dog does well. That's it. Here's the replay on that dog walk. Chili just plain bail. She loses her footing and manages that fall beautifully. Lands on her feet in perfect control. Then decides the A-frame's not so appealing. Well, finally, here's teenager Shanna Lemke and her Sheltie Banker. Shanna says her dog has some adolescent tendencies himself. He's kind of stubborn sometimes, and the rap is having to give in to me, so I think he has some problems with that sometimes. He's got issues, let's say. <laughs> well, Banker and Shanna finished second in the Nationals last year, barely missing the top spot by 1.6 seconds. And look at that, on the table is 16 seconds. Now that is the new fastest time of this run. This is a beautiful run, very zippy. He's close on his contacts, and now he's too fast off the table. That is faulted, but she still has a lovely run going here. Oh. Clean, tight, fast. She crosses behind at the A-frame. Look at the speed on that A-frame. And tight into the closing sequence. 
Carter. <laughs> and Banker qualifies for one of the fastest time in this class. The five faults will drop her out of the top places. So on their first attempt of qualifying, Pat Howell and Avery not only qualify, but they win the darn thing by more than two seconds over Abby and Cynthia Ernest. And here's our four winners getting their ribbons and a year's supply of science diet. Not a bad day's work. We look forward to seeing all of them in San Diego for the Animal Planet USDAA Grand Prix of Dog Agility Finals later this year. For Julie Daniels, I'm Phil Moore saying run fast but run clean. Up next on Call the Wild, young Miles gets abducted by a desperate convict who's looking to use Miles' tracking skills to escape the authorities. That leaves Buck to save him, and he's only one dog. What can he do? Now you'll see what happens when a dog loves his boy. Love, sure, but get killed in the mountain for? I don't know. Then, thankfully, you're not the dog on Call of the Wild next. And dig up Animal Planet at Discovery.com. You're watching Animal Planet. On this episode...